Welcome to Chalkboard History. Today we're going to talk about. Yeah, our think about that for a second. Favorite Civil War sites. But first, a public service announcement. When you go to your favorite Civil War sites, or if you work at your favorite Civil War sites, if you're super sensitive, you must always wear a hat when you're outside. Professor? Yep, you should do that. It's got the seal of approval. Professor apparently was fried yesterday, although he doesn't look very fried to me. But Colors back. Good fried, morning. he said, because you gave, what, two battlefield tours? So you spent like two hours outside. Uh, two and a half. On a 50-degree day in March. Yep. Well, you should see me in the summer. I mean, the summer is always hot. Always bad. So, public service announcement. Yes, wear a hat. Wear your hats. Okay. You know, the Amish sell great hats down in Etheridge. They're like big straw hats. You want me to wear a big straw hat on the battlefield tour? If it helps protect your sensitive skin, I'm all for it. You heard it here first. Heard He's going to let me do that. So what's your favorite Civil War site? Let's start with let's start with what's your what's your least favorite Civil War site? Least favorite. Of ones of course that you visited. Oh. Can I say that? Like can would people get upset? No, I was just kidding. Let's start with your favorite Civil War sites. Okay. Um, my favorite is just in terms of like a battlefield to visit, my favorite battlefield is probably Shiloh, just because of like the preservation of it and how pristine the field is. Even it's got all of like the kind of myths that surround like the bloody pond and everything. I just think it's a cool site. Shiloh is really cool. Shiloh is probably one of the best in the <clears throat> in the national park mm-hmm. system. But what but else? Like maybe Pea Ridge. Pea Ridge is a close second to Shiloh. Why Pea Ridge? Because it is also pristine. Like, you go up in that observation tower and you can overlook the entire field. And it is almost exactly as our boy right here saw. Earl Van Dorn. Yeah. Well, saw as he bumbled and fumbled his way through it. But saw, nevertheless. It's a cool site. It's just a really, really cool site. And the way that it's laid out, how you look out and you don't see anything modern. There's like a water tower way off in the distance, like a telephone wire that you can kind of see. You know, Pea Ridge was the second... It's just perfect. Pea Ridge was the second... Uh, battlefield site that I ever visited. I was just thinking that I went to Wilson's Creek first mm-hmm. and then went to Pea Ridge because way back in the day that was a straight shot mm-hmm. south from Minnesota. That was my first experience into realizing <laughs> that you didn't need to get far out of like Iowa mm-hmm. and you were in the south. Like I remember being in <laughs> Hannibal, Missouri going, this is not like where I grew <laughs> up. And then you, know, you get into the Ozarks, and it was a totally different thing, but is cool that, places. Is that Missouri or Missouri? Somebody made a very big point about that the other day. I'm well, sure. I'm not from there, so I, don't know. I say Missouri. But this isn't like Oregon and Oregon, or you know, people know. who mispronounce that. I think it's like Oregon? a northern it's Missouri, southern Missouri thing. Feels like. What about Prairie Grove? I've never been to Prairie uh, Grove. Yeah. Sunburn on the battlefield and never been to Prairie never Grove. Never been to Prairie Grove. Prairie Grove is really cool. I think Prairie Grove is a state site, but it is, well, it's almost pristine. There, mm-hmm. There's a great um, place on the field where the, where the main thrust of the battle unfolded. And there's, if I recall, there's a, there's a home, a historic home there. Mm-hmm. So per, Prairie Grove is really, really cool. Um, but so Shiloh. Uh, what about um, what about Vicksburg? See, I like Vicksburg. I just I, I don't know. I think every time I go there, I go around the anniversary, so it is miserably hot, oppressively hot, and it's hard to get out and just do the entire battlefield in a day. It's a place I think that you have to devote three and four days just to understand. You know, I, when I went to Vicksburg, <clears throat> it probably wasn't the first time. I know that I was I was. <coughs> kind of looking around at the Battle of Champion Hill Mm -hmm. and I saw the Coker house before it was all restored Mm -hmm. but Champion Hill of course you know leads to the the real fighting around Vicksburg you know that what 47 days Mm -hmm. Vicksburg was the first place where I got a different sense about what the U.S. Army Mm -hmm. was doing It, it because it is just so awful hot in the summertime yeah. and the terrain is you know it's up and down yes 
And and those guys from, especially the ones from like Iowa and Illinois. I mean, it must have been almost like a foreign country to them. Mm-hmm. And and they just choke the Confederate Army, and of course, then you know, largely the Mississippi is is under control mm-hmm. of um, the U.S. Navy. But that was a place that I know struck me as different, but. See, my, my alternative to Vicksburg is to go to Port Hudson. I guess because I only grew up like two hours from it. it is a quick drive up past Baton Rouge, out to Feliciana, and then you're there. Uh, and I think because it has so many pieces of the earthworks that were they're still intact and you can still walk the grounds and you can still see it, I think that's always been. I guess it's smaller too, so I think I just liked it a little bit more. It was also... It's kind of in your backyard, so you get that that kind of backyard history feel. So when I was thinking about this, it's like, do you really have a favorite, you know, do you really have like your favorite (laughs) song or your favorite album or your favorite movie? And I was thinking about Civil War sites and and not just battlefield sites, Mm -hmm. but I don't know that, I mean, Shiloh's probably, you know, pretty high on the list, but Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that there's such a thing as like a genuine bona fide favorite. I mean, gosh, Mm -hmm. we work at Spring Hill and Franklin, so yeah. They've got to be kind of... That's what I asked you yesterday. Is like, can they count? Because if they do, that's like the top three. So that that's already gone. You know, I, I don't know that Franklin... <laughs> this is going to sound so strange. I don't know that... I feel very differently about Spring Hill and Franklin. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're different events just mm-hmm. bound together by this wild, like, 36 hours. But I don't know that they were ever my f- favorite. You know, See, they were, they were for me. They were, there was something different about this place. There was something different about what had unfolded and, the, and just the god-awful tragedy of, mm-hmm. of Franklin. But the mysteries of Spring Hill, or as, as uh, the subtitle of my first book is, you know, the, the affair at Spring Hill, mm-hmm. which is, you know, what, what really happened or didn't happen. But I, I think one of my favorites uh, in a dish, because I like Vicksburg. Mm-hmm. And I like Shiloh a lot. Is Chickamauga, yeah. And Chickamauga is really a different kind of battlefield. Mm-hmm. The, you know, it just has a whole different feel to it. It's actually the one place where the Army of Tennessee um, is pretty successful. You know, thinking about that area on the field, especially as someone who followed Hood around, mm-hmm. and seeing that, you know. The, the breakthrough there, which is kind of like walking through an open door. But nonetheless, as Longstreet's core, yeah. <laughs> as Longstreet's core, you know, plows through that area, um, it was Chickamauga is a great place, and, mm-hmm. and Chickamauga is also great because it's you know part of that um, original grouping of NPS mm-hmm. sites. I think most people don't even realize that there's no such thing as national parks. You know, yeah. this even in the immediate aftermath of the war, mm-hmm. these. Uh, you know, original parks, Chickamauga, Chattanooga, Gettysburg, mm-hmm. Vicksburg, Shiloh, Antietam, and did, which one did I miss? I think that's, I think I we think, covered them. Did I cover them all? Yeah. That, that's all like in the, you know, mid to late 1890s. Yeah, and those are the first. And I think Chickamauga is, Chickamauga, Chattanooga, because it encompasses the whole thing. And it's the a, biggest of all. And A.P. Stewart too. was the, uh, one of the original, mm-hmm. he was the original superintendent, or one of them. He used to, yeah, he's on the board, certainly. He used to ride around the park on one of those old-timey bikes mm-hmm. with the big front wheel, which would have been kind of funny to see. I learned that in Sam Elliott's book about Oh, Sam. yeah. I, I just really like... You know what we haven't talked about? Oh. No, Eastern Theater. Well, I mean, I, I, we, do, you, do you hit the mamma jamma of them all? Because, I mean, I think what, Gettysburg what, is a great site. <clears throat> Gettysburg is like Vicksburg. It's a different kind of place. Yeah. It's a totally different kind of place. I mean, yes, there's... I guess I tire of the like incessant combat conversations, mm-hmm. like the same old ones. It's probably yeah. why I don't like to talk about Updike. It's like I've talked about him and talked about him and talked about yeah. him. And in Gettysburg, it's it's little round top. And, uh, yeah. Horrible scene from the movie that yeah. we should have gone around to the right. I was wondering you know, how long it would be until it's you did that. so yeah. awful. It's just, and Hood's like 800 years old. <laughs> you know, it's played by a guy who's way too old. But Gettysburg is, Gettysburg is, Gettysburg isn't just a battlefield. That's why yeah. Lincoln went there. Gettysburg yeah. is... This came up on my tour yesterday. Mm-hmm. I gave a tour at Carnton, and I was talking about, you know, Lee was pushing into Pennsylvania mm-hmm. and very possibly would have lunged eastward toward Philadelphia. I mean, mm-hmm. just just think about it. A, 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 a Confederate army 
on the loose in a, a bona fide northern real northern cities, right? Yeah. And a major northern city, yeah. and of course he gets sucked into that battle. And so, yeah, Gettysburg is pretty amazing. Um, I'm gonna throw one out that I is is one of my favorites in the East, mm. and it's Gaines Mill. And again, I went to Gaines Mill because I was, you know, chasing Hood. I was yeah. like a Hood boy chasing him around everywhere he went. Gaines Mill is the is the crummiest, <coughs> uh, most awful terrain. Mm-hmm. I've ever seen on any battlefield. Vicksburg's pretty close, but Vicksburg's mm-hmm. you know a, a campaign, many days. Mm-hmm. Gaines Mill is that one day, and it's probably the largest attack mm-hmm. of the war, largest infantry assault. Oh, it's it's horrible. I I don't know how, I don't know how they did it. My, I guess my other eastern one would be like Petersburg and its Pamplin Park. Mm-hmm. Just I mean I remember going there when it was really really young and I still think about it did you wear a hat I'm sure I did it was probably a cap did your mom put a hat on you let's be completely honest yeah probably so yeah yeah I have hated sunscreen my entire life so hats were always preferred well you should try that public service announcement too try sunscreen first I don't like sunscreen this is why you have troubles I know know. all right so So, moving beyond small park is really great small professor with his Small professor, really great. But they have rebuilt and then they have maintained a section of the original works that were there. And you get a real understanding for what that last few months of the war looked like. That kind of intense trench warfare, this, we'll bombard you, we'll find, we'll build bigger earthworks. We'll find, we'll build, and we'll bring up even heavier guns. And this is kind of escalation until the point where it just, you can't, it can't be maintained anymore. Or it's that day, kind of critical mass. Or the day after day of just sitting there. Yeah. In the sun, yes. Burned, no food. Rain, yeah. You're soaked. Yeah. Rats in the trenches. Yeah. Rotting food. It sort of strips. That's a place where the the any romance mm-hmm. is is just gone. Mm-hmm. It that's that's, I think maybe the same experience at Vicksburg. It's just Petersburg is a year, is a year yeah. later. <clears throat> There's nothing about it that. Um, I think anybody was considering in 1861. Nobody mm-hmm. thought they'd be sitting in a trench, taking, um, you know, shell so, after shell every other or day sniper and shots, and then just you know, sitting. Who, who'd ever considered that yeah. you would get shot by an opponent you couldn't see? Yeah, or that they would shoot at you just for popping your head out of the trench. So mm-hmm. that that the war had changed. Um, the other one, the other Eastern Theater battlefield that reminded me a lot of Franklin. Mm-hmm. Just because of its size. Because you know, if you go to Shiloh and Chickamauga and Gettysburg, they're so big. Like, yeah. you know, the 3,000 acres or mm-hmm. whatever is Antietam. Yeah. And Antietam is so small and compact. And the and by the way, if you've never been to Antietam, mm-hmm. you should go because it's really a beautiful place. It's that sort of rolling Maryland countryside mm-hmm. that, I mean, you can tell when people, white settlers first got there, they must have been like, oh, this is like. This is like heaven, you know, mm-hmm. and you could grow almost almost anything. And, you know, it's just a lot of small farms out that area. I mean, certainly mm-hmm. slavery exists in Maryland. But that battlefield, like, everybody's in on top of each mm-hmm. other. And, you know, to go, again, another hood yep. place, you know, you go through, you know, whether it's um, Dunker Church or the Cornfield or the or, East Woods, or yeah. East Woods Sunken Road. Um, Burnside Bridge, that's a place where you can feel the sort of heaviness Mm -hmm. of anybody who got through that battle probably felt quite fortunate. It's not just Hood that we have there, too. Jacob Cox is also there with the Ninth Corps. George Wagner is not, is he? No, he's not. I just wanted to make sure Wagner wasn't there. Because Wagner's in a lot of places, but but he's not Not that far east, yeah. Right. Actually, Antietam's the first place where really bona fide uh, photographs of the dead are taken, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's uh, Brady. Yeah. Is it Brady? It's Brady or Gardner. Gardner? Sullivan? One of the two. Some guy we've never heard of? No, I think it's Brady. I think it's either Brady or Gardner. I can't remember. I, I think it's Brady. I know me, like a lot of people, you know, some photographic history of the Civil War mm-hmm. and to see the... I mean, a lot of people focus on the like the dead in the sunken mm-hmm. road. For me, it was the dead along the Hagerstown Pike. And somebody mm-hmm. years ago talked about you could see where the guys had pulled their like the pockets were out of their pants mm-hmm. is because they were they'd been hit in the stomach, mm-hmm. gut shot, and they were trying to figure out 
where it was. Where it was, yeah. You know, and and there's just I don't know half a dozen of them or something, and they're such high quality. You know, you can zoom in on those photos mm-hmm. and you can see details that are are really pretty stunning. Mm-hmm. So, what about Civil War sites that aren't Civil War related sites that aren't really battlefields, or are there any more battlefields we should talk about? I think there's probably two others that we should talk about, and they're really far south. And this was on my chase for the Missourians. Because I kind of went up to Vicksburg, I saw their first portion of the war, like Bowen's guys, Cockrell's men, and then I wanted to go see where they finished the war, and that's at Blakely, which is a state historic site in Alabama. It's not that far from Mobile. <laughs> Pat um, Landrum. <laughs> Pat, yeah. Yeah, that's that's for Pat. Uh, but no, this is a really cool site, just because you can follow kind of, and what's great is like, it's one of the last land charges of the war, and it takes place on April 9th of 65, so the same day that Lee's surrendering... In Appomattox, you've got active combat going on in Mobile. And what other Missourians are there? Federal Missourians, too. 44th Missouri. Yeah. Who yeah. had also been at Franklin with Cockrell's guys. Yeah. Fared a little better, but they were certainly witness to one of the most incredible artillery barrages yeah. the war that's, ever saw. That's, I, and I always just think it's a cool sight because you see the same, I guess it's just some of the same figures from here. Cockrell's there. Gates is there. What about Perryville? Let's just go shoot back north. I've not been to Perryville. Yeah, I know. And now I only live three hours from it, and I've, I've still never been. I'm so disappointed. We have to get I've a new, tried. We have to get a new co-host. I've this tried. This one's not working out. Several times to go, and I've just never made it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Fort Donaldson. Okay, think about this. I'm, I lived in Louisiana my entire life. That's like, that's a ridiculous trip. That's 12 hours. Now it's three. Where did I grow up? Yeah, okay. And where did I live? That's fine. Right. I used to get on an yeah. airplane to come here. Put a hat on. Get in Put the box. Put a hat on. Get in the box. Okay. Goodness gracious. Uh, for Donaldson, Donaldson's really cool. Donaldson is really cool. Because you yep. can go right from Donaldson to Nashville mm-hmm. to Shiloh to Corinth. You can follow Grant, you can follow Sherman, mm-hmm. you can follow the, the the crush of the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy as they start to shatter the Western theater. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, this is a battlefield that's mostly lost, but if you have time, you should, you should do it. Because you can really do it in the better part of a day, mm-hmm. is Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And specifically the Battle of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can one, yeah. you can kind of go and see what's left of Peachtree Creek, and there's a little <coughs> bit of Jonesboro. Mm-hmm. Um, Ezra Church is not there's, that's almost gone. Mm-hmm. But but the Battle of Atlanta, I think it was in the Centennial. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably '64. And what's his name? Is it Wilbur Kurtz? Kurtz K U R Z. Mm-hmm. He was an Atlanta historian, mm-hmm. and he helped. Um, if he didn't write them all, he, he got all the markers put up. So mm-hmm. you can see where uh, James McPherson was killed. You mm-hmm. can see where W.H.T. Walker was killed. You can see where Claiborne's division is engaged and mm-hmm. Bates' division is engaged. <clears throat> Bill Clark, um, William Bates. Yes. Yeah. Little, little toss out there. Man, we are making all kinds of like like little shout-outs here. Right. You, there's actually a really cool place where you can see Hardy's Corps as it moved out mm-hmm. on its Wait, out on know, the flanking, the flanking maneuver. You can see where um, Granville Dodge's guys mm-hmm. were. So... Like like Nashville or or even some of Franklin, a lot of it's lost. But mm-hmm. you can follow the the the, the flow of the mm-hmm. battle. I have to say, because W. H. D. Walker was so opposed to Claiborne's proposal to arm slaves, mm-hmm. to be at the spot where W. H. T. Walker actually got shot, I I had to laugh and say the irony of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know the irony of it. Mm-hmm. So you asked about favorite sites that aren't battlefields. You're thinking like museums or just other historic sites? Well, Both and. I'll tell you the two that, for me, mm-hmm. um, Andersonville. Yeah. There is no place like Andersonville. Mm-hmm. And it is the only place where I <clears throat> felt the just... the utter tragedy of just war and mm-hmm. these men who have been captured but also I was struck by something else because I knew the story of Henry Wirtz and I, I knew he had you know paid the ultimate price for his wrongs or grievance or sins or whatever however you want to describe it 
when I left Andersonville, I was convinced Wirtz got exactly mm -hmm. um, what he deserved because the whole, oh, I'm just following orders routine, yeah, at, at some point, that's not an excuse. Yeah. And and when you look at other POW camps like, like Cahaba, yeah. which is not far away in Alabama, the mm -hmm. death rate wasn't nearly what was at Andersonville. Mm -hmm. And it's just pure negligence. Mm -hmm. And that ground is... I mean, I'm not going to say it's holy or anything like that, but mm -hmm. it, it carries a kind of weight to it. And when you walk to the cemetery, cause, yeah. you know, when the Federal Cavalry first shows up there, I think it's early May of 65, they don't know what they have stumbled upon mm -hmm. because the cemetery is a, is a short distance from the actual stockade. And mm -hmm. then they found the graves. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, there's 15,000 of them there. Yeah. But the other one is... The Lincoln Memorial. In D.C.? Yeah. To, to, to visit the Lincoln Memorial in context with a place like Gettysburg mm -hmm. is to see um, a side of the war that cannot be ignored. Because, mm -hmm. like it or not, he was the president of the United States and he was fighting to keep it together. Mm -hmm. And the Lincoln Memorial, with the words of the Gettysburg Address... And of course, his second inaugural, mm -hmm. etched into whether I don't know whether it's stone or marble, mm -hmm. is a powerful place. I I would say the only place that comes close to it in my mind is the tomb, because I just went there a couple weeks ago in Springfield. Yeah, is to stand there and be at the place where he's buried, <clears throat> and you're surrounded by images and his words, and you're there in the place where the man whose his life was cut short. He dies trying to save the nation. You know, there's actually two more. And it's the um, White House of the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. In Richmond. Yeah. In Richmond. Which, you know, is now it's under the banner of the American Civil War Museum, right? Because mm -hmm. Tredegar and White House of the Confederacy. And Appomattox, all three of them. Right. And so, so it wasn't like that. When yeah. I first visited years ago, they it's weren't. just the one. Right. Yep. Which was... You need to go. You mm -hmm. know, this is where one of the most influential of Americans, mm -hmm. Jefferson Davis, was trying to, um, you know, lead this rebellion to create a, a, a separate country and one in which slavery was intended to be perpetual. Mm -hmm. And now some of that stuff's at Appomattox, but I went there, I went to Richmond mm -hmm. first, and then I went to Appomattox. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole Grant Lee thing, you know, the, the end, we all know the end wasn't really for a couple of more weeks, but mm -hmm. those are really powerful places too yeah. because the symbolism of what happens at Appomattox, you know, that it was Grant who starts in the West and has mm -hmm. to go East to finish it. And he does right there. And I know, and also I think we're, we're sometimes dogged a little bit by the idea that that's where the reconciliation began. Everything was... As uh, we saw in History of the World Part Two with Mel Brooks, it's mm. everybody triple kiss. That's right. Good to go. And it was all good right there. Yep. And, and you know whether you're Grant or whether you're Lincoln, who only had just days to live, mm -hmm. I think in their hearts hoped that we could, with the war ended, we could move on. Mm -hmm. What Lincoln never knew, and then what Grant came to realize as a two-term president. Mm -hmm but also watching what happened to Johnson's administration, there was not going to be any real reconciliation. This was going to be a bitter, dirty fight for several generations, as it turned out. And that's, I think, why Civil War sites today are as important as ever. I think we have to go to these places where we see these young and middle-aged men from all over the country who were quite aware of the world in which they lived, mm -hmm. fighting desperately viciously sitting in a trench dying of you know some awful disease in Iuka mm -hmm. Mississippi you know or or you know at sitting outside of Chattanooga waiting for the hammer to fall or, or sitting in Atlanta being shelled or outside you know, outside of Nashville two weeks or, or outside of Nashville or or watching the sun come up in Franklin <clears throat> On the morning of December first, eighteen sixty-four, and you're some, you're some kid from Tishomingo County, in Mississippi, and you look around and you you can't even, you can't even 
understand what has happened to you and you're in the middle of it so if they struggled with it of course we could never fully understand it mm-hmm. so we missed anything the oh, only no. one that jumps out is Sumter because we didn't think about where it all started you know I thought Fort Sumter was really interesting but I thought it was almost a little I don't know anticlimactic which is strange because it's the yeah it's it starts the, you off it's the thing that you start with but mm-hmm. I, don't know. I think Sumter's strange because it feels really like you're shuttled there and you have to be shuttled back. And so you have to be on like a time schedule. You have to be like, all right, we're going to see this, we're going to see this, we're going to see this. And you have to be real regimented. When I go to a site, I just kind of want to spend a day there. Oh, my goodness. you don't get to do that. You know what I just thought of? What's I that? just thought of one of my favorites. And I can't believe we haven't discussed this. Spotsylvania. Yeah. The Mule Shoe. Yep. The Mule Shoe is the only place that's really eerily reminiscent of Franklin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are people there like Edward Johnson, who's captured mm-hmm. at the Mule Shoe, who leads the nighttime attack at Franklin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emory Upton, of course, leads that that sledgehammer attack early that morning. Han- William, uh, Win- William Winfield Scott Hancock. Mm-hmm. All the big names you could think of are there. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you been to the Mule Shoe? Mm-hmm. Yes. We did all of Virginia. Because that can take you right to Cold Harbor. Mm-hmm. Fredericksburg is sad, a little bit like Franklin. So yeah. much of it's been lost. But yeah, Although I really like Fredericksburg. I mean, every time that I've been there, I've always enjoyed it. I think I walked through the streets and I was supposed to be like Joshua Chamberlain or something like that. The Mule Shoe. Yeah. Wow. Mule Shoe is a great place, though. I guess the last one that I can think of are the birthplaces of Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis. And they're literally within like 100 miles of each other in Kentucky. And I think everyone should visit those because you see that Lincoln was literally born in a dirt poor holler Mm -hmm. in Kentucky. I mean, this guy came from nothing. And and Davis didn't come from much either. Davis Mm -hmm. is a, like if you've ever seen the monument, it's the Washington Monument in Kentucky. I mean, you can see it from like seven miles away. And they both came from this just really background of, of poverty and, and, and almost nothing. And, you know, I've said for years, it's like they're two vehicles in a big city and they're taking all these turns on these different mm-hmm. streets and they end up confronting one another in 1861. And I think each was committed in their own way to, to see it to the end. Speaking of Davis, have you ever been to Irwinville, Georgia, where he was captured? Yes. That's a cool place. That is a cool place. And that, actually, that was one of those where we were driving down to Florida, and I was like, okay, we're going to get off real quick. Mm-hmm. It's not close to the interstate, but it is a fun little drive out there. So we've been there. And then uh, there's another site that came to mind, and it's a private residence, so it's not like you can really go in and go see it. But Chasing Hood, growing up in New Orleans, is easy. Third in camp where he lived, and where his family lived, and where he died. Garden District, right? Yeah. Yep. Garden District been in there. New Orleans. Cool and then place. you think about just the neighborhood that he's in, because like he's there, Davis is not that far away, Beauregard lives right across the town, uh, Leonidas Polk is, or Leonidas, or however I'm supposed to say it, he's buried right there at Christ Cathedral. So there's a lot of Civil War figures all just in that one area. Then there's, of course, there's the museum, the Memorial Hall Museum, started by Confederate veterans. And then you've got the cemeteries, each of them, an Army of Northern Virginia tomb and an Army of Tennessee tomb. New Orleans is full of Civil War history. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's just a cool city. You know, once I was on Bourbon Street and I went to see Beauregard's house because I got tired of what was happening over there, <laughs> further up on yeah. Bourbon Street, because Beauregard's place is not far down from like you know where Lafitte's mm-hmm. uh, Tavern is, which is a really cool place. Never been to Lafitte's, you should go. Beauregard's place is just a few blocks. Mm-hmm. I don't know what direction that is. Then. North, north, okay. Yeah. And because he's right on the corner, he's pushing towards like the Esplanade area, right? Yeah. Well, Hood's. Uh, Hood's burial place. His grave is really, yeah, the tomb. Yeah, you know, first for, one or the second one, because well, where he is, where today, he is today, yeah. and what struck me when I first went there was, you know, for all the people who'd hack on Hood and complain about him, you know, this guy was everywhere from Gaines Mill to Nashville. I mean, he saw some of the worst combat that the Civil War offered, and um, you know, you can question his motives. You know, should he have done what he did since his state never even seceded? But he certainly saw a lot. And 
You know, I think that's the power of these places is you have to, I, I try to think beyond just what's the obvious. Right. You know, like the, to go back to what I said about Chickamauga, for the Army of Tennessee, there seemed like there was this moment where maybe they were going to, maybe the, the tables were going to turn and then that turned into Chattanooga, which is a big... And the tables did turn and then they turned again. Ends and ends up being again. a huge defeat and then there's just one after the other mm-hmm. after the other through the Atlanta campaign and then you spin back up to Spring Hill and to Franklin and to Nashville. And for the Army of Tennessee, there was not to be... Um, any good ending, mm-hmm. but these places now it's uh, what 162 years ago mm-hmm. since the war started. Just the other day, it was the 162nd anniversary of Lincoln's inauguration, and from that point, it seems like everything starts to go hyper fast. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it's the summer of '61, and you've got the battle. Here's oh, Bull Run. Yeah. Not not a favorite, but you don't go to many places where you get two battles on basically the that's, same that's field. That's true, yeah. That's pretty And you cool. don't get to see this, the jacked Superman statue of Stonewall Jackson anywhere else. I also like going there to imagine that Barnard B., when he said, there he stands like a stone wall, or however he said it, it really wasn't a compliment. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that B. was like, look at him, he won't move. Um, that's a cool place because more so, I think, for the first battle. Mm-hmm. Because it's the summer of 61, and all of a yeah. sudden there's, what, 5,000 casualties. Mm-hmm. Nobody was expecting it. Then it's Wilson's Creek. Mm-hmm. Then it's the end of 61. Then it's Mill Springs in early 62. Then it's Fort Donaldson. Then Nashville Falls. Then it's Shiloh. 23,000 casualties. And now we're, we're barely now a year in. Mm-hmm. And then you hit that stretch of summer 62 where it just seems like there's something every other day. And so everything we've yeah. talked about, if you dial it back and you think about the politics and the social issues that got us there and so many people could not have anticipated this and within a year within a few months and then within a year it was becoming very obvious that this was going to be something terrible and that's why you have to go to these places that's, that's, I tell people that all the time like we don't talk about just the battle it's not just one day it's everything it's 30 years that led up to the war. It's the hundred years. It's the two hundred years that preceded it, and it's the hundred years afterwards. Um, so we do have an online store, and people that listen to this podcast, yeah, I mean it's on the website. Oh, that's right. That's true. So people that listen to this on the podcast form, or they listen to the other version of the podcast, which is Tour Guide Talk, they could support and actually advertise the Dispatch. I don't know if that can be seen through the camera, but full T-shirt there, and then we've also got some other designs out there. So any on. hats. We need hats. You hear it here first. We need hats. All right. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned because next week's chalkboard history is a doozy. It is a doozy. And some of you might want to strap that uh, buckle one one notch tighter because it's going to be something else. See you later.